Hello everyone, I welcome you all to my channel. In this video, we are going to discuss an important topic that is PN junction diode from the subject electronic devices and circuits. First, let us see what is PN junction, how it is created. Okay. So, when a P-type semiconductor and an N-type semiconductor is joined together at the contact surface is called as PN junction. There are many methods to create a PN junction. So, the one of the common method used is called as alloying. Okay. So, in P-type semiconductor, the majority charge carriers are holes and N-type semiconductor, the majority charge carriers are electrons. So, when we combine these P-type and N-type semiconductors, the majority charge carriers move from one region to the other region. So, this is called as diffusion. So, for example, see this is P-type uh, semiconductor and this is N-type semiconductor. We are combining that is joining these two semiconductors. So, in N-type semiconductor, the electrons are the majority charge carriers and in P-type semiconductor, the holes are the majority charge carriers. So, when we join these two semiconductors, the holes move from P-type semiconductor to N-type semiconductor. Similarly, the electrons move from N-type to P-type. So, these electrons will combine with holes. Similarly, these holes will combine with the electrons. So, at the junction, positive ions and negative ions are created. So, these are immobile charge carriers. So, that only we are saying it is ions. So, in the N-type, the positive ions are created and in P-type, negative ions are created. So, this forms as a depletion region. Now, there will be a potential difference across this depletion layer. So, it is called as barrier potential. So, if you are taking the semiconductor as silicon means, then the barrier potential is 0.7 volt. Because by applying 0.7 volt only, we can break the junction. So, this is the barrier potential. For germanium, its value is 0.3 volt. So, here two types of bias conditions are used. That means applying voltage. Biasing is nothing but applying voltage to the PN junction. So, two types of biasing are there. One is forward biasing and the other one is reverse biasing. First, let us see what is forward biasing. So, forward biasing means P-type semiconductor is connected to the positive terminal of the battery. Similarly, N-type semiconductor is connected to the negative terminal of the battery. So, this process is called as forward biasing. So, when we connect P-type to the positive terminal of the battery, so this is positive. Similarly, holes are also positive. So, both gets repel each other. So, these holes tends to move from P-type to N-type. Similarly, in N-type semiconductor, it is connected to the negative terminal. So, this negative and negative charge carriers both gets repelled and these negative charge carriers moves from N-type to P-type. So, the junction diminishes. This process is called as forward biasing. So, now the resistance also gets decreased since there is a flow of charge carrier. Next, reverse biasing. So, reverse biasing means P-type semiconductor is connected to the negative terminal of the battery. N-type semiconductor is connected to the positive terminal of the battery. So, these holes are attracted towards this negative charge. Similarly, these electrons are attracted towards the positive charge. So, here the depletion region width gets increased. So, there is no flow of current. The potential barrier is increased. Also, here the resistance also gets increased. This process is called as reverse biasing. So, during the forward biasing condition only, there will be flow of current. Dur during the reverse bias condition, there will be no flow of current. But due to the minority charge carriers, there will be some leakage current. Next, let us see what is breakdown voltage. So, breakdown voltage means under reverse bias condition, we have to apply a small reverse voltage at the PN junction so that the junction gets breakdowns and that this give rise to the reverse current. So, this voltage is called as breakdown voltage. Next, knee voltage. So, it is a forward voltage 
at which the current through the junction starts to increase rapidly. So this is called as forward voltage. So here the main thing you have to remember is breakdown voltage is the reverse voltage and knee voltage is the forward voltage. Then another one important term is peak inverse voltage. So it is the maximum reverse voltage that can be applied to the PN junction without damaging the junction. So it is called as peak inverse voltage. Next semiconductor diode that is our PN junction diode. So it is also called as crystal diode. So here the important property of semiconductor diode is it acts as a rectifier. Rectifier means it will allow the current to flow in only in one direction. So that only we are saying it is rectifier. This is very very important property of the diode. Diode can be used as a rectifier. So here it is acts as a switch. So this is the symbol for diode. This is P type and this bar indicates the cathode. This is anode and this is cathode. So this is positive type and this is negative. Next ripple factor. So ripple factor is the ratio of RMS. RMS means root mean square value of the AC component. AC means alternating component divided by value of DC component. So that is equal to IAC divided by IDC. Then these are the important thing we have to remember for half pair rectifier we need one diode for center tap two diode for bridge type four diodes. Similarly transformer for half pair no need transformer for center tap we use transformer and for bridge type also there is no transformer. Maximum efficiency for half wave is 40.6 percentage, for center tap 81.2 percentage and for bridge type it is 81.2 percentage. Then ripple factor for half wave rectifier is 1.21, for center tap 0.48 and for bridge type 0.48. Then output frequency F in for center tap 2 into F in as well as for bridge type 2 into F in. Then peak inverse voltage for half wave it is maximum voltage Vm and send it up to Vm bridge type it is Vm. So we have to remember these values. Now let us discuss some important multiple choice questions. First question a forward biased PN junction has a resistance of option 1 order of ohm, option 2 order of kilo ohm, option 3 order of mega ohm, none of the above. So forward biased PN junction means there will be a flow of current. So if there is a flow of current then definitely the resistance value will be very very less. So the answer is it will be order of ohm. So option 1 is the correct answer. Next question, the battery connections required to forward bias PN junction. So forward bias PN junction means P type is connected to positive, N type is connected to negative. So that is the condition for forward bias. So the answer is option 1, positive terminal to P and negative terminal to N. Next question, the barrier voltage at a PN junction for germanium. So for silicon it is 0.7 volt, for germanium it is 0.3 volt. So answer is option 4. Next question. In the depletion region of a PN junction there is a shortage of acceptor ions, option 2 holes and electrons, option 3 donor ions, option 4 none of the above. So the correct answer is holes and electrons. Option 2 is the right answer. Next question. A reverse biased PN junction has. So it is reverse biased. So there will be only leakage current. So the resistance will be high. Also the depletion width will be more. So option 1 very narrow depletion layer. Almost no current. Very low resistance. Large current flow. So reverse bias condition means almost no current. So option 2 is the right answer. Next question. A PN junction acts as a controlled switch, bidirectional switch, unidirectional switch, none of the above. 
we know it can act as a switch also it is used for rectification that is rectifier means only one direction there will be flow of current so option 3 is the correct answer next question a reverse biased pn junction has resistance of the so reversed biased reverse biased means the resistance will be more therefore option 3 is the right answer that is order of mega ohm next question the leakage current across the pn junction is due to minority carriers majority carriers junction capacitance none of the above so the leakage current will occur due to minority carriers therefore option 1 is the right answer next question when the temperature of an extrinsic semiconductor is increased the pronounced effect is on so when the temperature if you increase the temperature of extrinsic semiconductor there will be effect only on minority carriers so option 2 is the right answer next question with forward bias to a pn junction the width of the depletion layer so forward bias means there will be flow of current therefore the width of the depletion layer decreases option 1 is the right answer next question the leakage current in a pn junction is the of the order of so leakage current mean minimum current therefore it will be the order of micro ampere therefore option 4 is the right answer next question a crystal diode has 1 pn junction 2 pn junction 3 pn junction none of the above so diode means it has only 1 pn junction therefore crystal diode has 1 pn junction option 1 is the right answer Next question, if the arrow of the crystal diode symbol is positive with respect to the bar, then the diode is, so if P type is connected to positive means, then it is forward biased. So option 1 is the right answer. A crystal diode is used as a amplifier, rectifier, oscillator, voltage regulator. We know diode is used as a rectifier, therefore option 2 is the right answer. Next question, the DC resistance of a crystal diode is dash its AC resistance. So DC resistance of the crystal diode is less than the AC resistance. So option 3 is the right answer. An ideal crystal diode is one which behaves as a perfect dash when forward biased. So when forward biased there will be full current flow therefore it acts as a perfect conductor during forward bias condition therefore option 1 is the right answer next question the PIV rating of a crystal diode is dash that of the equivalent vacuum diode so it is lower than the vacuum diode PIV means peak inverse voltage next question the knee voltage of a crystal diode is approximately equal to so knee voltage it is approximately equal to the barrier potential so option 4 is the right answer next question a crystal diode is a dash device so it is unilateral device also another one important property is it is non-linear device so option 1 is the right answer Next question, if the doping level of a crystal diode is increased, the width of the depletion layer, option 1 remains the same, option 2 is decreased, option 3 increased, option 4 none of the above. So here, the, if we increase the doping level means then automatically the deple width of the depletion layer gets increased. So option 3 is the right answer. I hope you all have understood the MCQ questions. If you like this video, kindly subscribe my channel and share with your friends. Thank you.